Pepper says, are you ready to start organizing? I know I am. A couple weeks ago, we were in the kitchen and we organized the medicine cabinet and it turned out so good. And I want to continue organizing in this kitchen, especially since I know that I am a butterfly. And I wanted to focus on the office space. Now, this cabinet that hubby built me a couple years ago is considered my office space. <laughs> and it's gotten a little unorganized because I didn't know the proper organizational technique that works for my personality. And the first thing I wanna do is actually take all the paper out from this countertop and also give it a quick clean. This video, I'm going to be focusing on the paper clutter and also some of the office supplies in one of the drawers because it's just gotten so messy and out of control. Now this bill organizer I've had for like, oh my God, forever. And I'm going to be taking the paper out of it, but I might be changing my system completely. I outgrew this system and plus, I rather use this space to create a tea bar. Now I got this for Christmas and that will be another video. But let me go back to focus on what we're doing this video. Now, office supplies. I'm going to start organizing the office supplies now that we have the countertop cleared off because it's just a mess and it hasn't been organized in ever. So I'm going to start with this drawer right here. Now with my ADHD, I need to focus on one compartment at a time. So this has all the pens and I'm taking everything out of this first compartment and I'm going to put it on the countertop and also give this a really good clean. And now I'm checking each and every pen to see if it works. Of course, we're gonna keep the working pens and toss out the ones that don't work anymore. Now, this organizer is from Dollar Tree. I got it last year or maybe even 2021 because I have so many organizational pieces, but I know that they still have it there. And what I'm doing is I'm just putting all of the pens, the markers, into this little container. Now, I noticed that I still had a lot of unused space that I could actually use. So I decided to move the container up towards the front and then put the scissors right in there. Now that I completed the first compartment, I can now move on to the second one. And this one has a bunch of different categories. And this is why with my ADHD, I'm successful when I have smaller categories to organize because if I have too much, I can start to get a little jumbled in my brain. And now that it's all cleaned out, I can start putting my organizational little containers in there. Now this is from Dollar Tree. And I have a second one that's a little smaller. This is from Target because I couldn't fit the two Dollar Tree ones in there, especially since I'm a butterfly. So I need these open visual compartments, especially because I'm ADHD. It has to be a one step, max two step process for me to put something away because my mind is already 10 to 20 thoughts ahead of itself. And this right here, these are some quick tossy tossies, so we'll be recycling them. And finally, we're going to get to this back drawer. Again, another mod podge of very random stuff. And I noticed that a lot of this is brand new pens and school supplies. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that in my back to school office supply bin because I shop my hoarded stash come August. And you know what else I found a lot of in here? Money. There were so many random cash envelopes in here that I need to put this in a much safer place. But I must say, I love when my house pays me to organize and declutter it. And for this back drawer, I decided to not put little organizers in it because the pieces that I had, I can just visually lay it out. And now finally, my messy office supply drawer is organized and hubby had added this contact paper just to give it a little more visual appeal. And I have to admit, I really love how this came out. It's really awesome now that I know exactly what my organizational style is so that I can be successful in maintaining it. And I'm also pretty sure my entire house is a bunch of butterflies too. 
Next, we're going to move on to paper clutter because Lord knows I have so much paper clutter and this drawer is just a bunch of random receipts, paperwork. I mean, I don't even know what's in here honestly anymore. The next drawer is my filing cabinet section and I actually can maintain this because it's very colorful and it's a one step put away process clearly labeled. And of course, this is a hot spot for paper and mail. So of course, we'll be going through that. And this right here in the living room, I wanna to totally redo it this year. I haven't figured out what, but there's a lot of schoolwork paper that's in this cubby right here. So that's what we're gonna focus on. And this is a bag of mail that we found in front of the closet when we were organizing it. Yes, some of these old habits are hard to break, but we're doing it now. And of course, in Marie Kondo fashion, I am going to be taking all the different paperwork, putting it on this table so that I can go through all of it. And paper can be very overwhelming, especially to ADHD hoarding behaviors because it's just a lot of decisions that have to be made whether to keep or let go of. With hoarding disorder, making that many decisions to let go of stuff can trigger an emotion from our past and then we get overwhelmed and then we totally avoid it. With ADHD, our brains lack dopamine. So if there's no reward for going through all the paperwork, we're gonna lose focus really quickly. And that's why I used to fall to decision-making fatigue so quickly in the past. But after doing this for a few years, I know I do get rewarded because I will have an organized space and I've been working through the past traumas that had triggered the hoarding disorder so that I can make better decisions we have strengthened my decision-making muscles over the years. I am also trying to downsize the amount of paper that is coming into my home. Now, I am debt-free except for my mortgage. So each month I just have to pay for mortgage, utilities, food, and that type of stuff but I still get a paper bill and I'm trying to transition into more online paying. But look, being a kid of the 80s and 90s, <laughs> my baseline was to write everything down. It's how my ADHD processes things, is to be able to write things down and keep track of it. But the paper bills, honestly, were just a small percentage of the paper clutter. It was the schoolwork that came home and also the receipts that I had. Now, most of these receipts were from 2021 and the beginning of 2022, when I was not doing the no spend challenge. That's why I brought it back in September 20. 22 because I had noticed that my spending habits were starting to backslide into more of a shopaholic pattern. And now the table is looking so much better. This hot spot is reset and also in our drawers where the paper was overflowing. Now, I'm still trying to figure out how I want to organize this drawer. I know I want to add contact paper, but the main goal was accomplished and that was getting rid of the paper clutter. And if I want to prevent future paper clutter from entering my house well doing the new spend challenge really helps with that because it helps prevent new bills and receipts coming in that I have to take the time to process and with inflation being high all over the world well this is the best year to really start these no spend challenge habits because I cannot afford to go back into a shopaholic behaviors again especially if I'm trying to declutter my hoarded house. Now, this is how we did for January. And so far, we have done amazing. Now, I'm actually recording this on January 29th. But as you can see, most of the days are colored except for four. And that's because we were friends and we ate out, which is okay because it was an experience and we enjoyed it. We still crushed our January no spend goal. And I also want you to keep in mind that I have been doing this for a while, so I've created the habit and have gotten better at it. And here is our February no spend challenge. Of course, I went with a Valentine's theme. And what we do is we color the days that we spend absolutely no money. Now, it doesn't count if you buy groceries, pay a bill, fill your tank with gas, 
Those are necessities, and you need to pay that. It is all the extra things, like the rules that I have right here. So if you would like a copy of the February New Spin Challenge, please email me at hoardersheart at gmail.com. Now, last month <laughs> was a little crazy because a lot of the emails did not go out. Um, I think that we fixed it. So if they, if you did not receive a January no spend challenge, I am so sorry. <laughs> I think we figured out what the issue was. And I think also moving forward, it would be best if you put in the heading February no spend challenge. That way it even identifies the email even more because I want to make sure that you guys are getting a copy of it so that you can do the challenge with us all together as a YouTube family. This is gonna be a great year and we're just going to make these adjustments where we can. Nobody's perfect. So even if you color in one or two no spend days, that's still a success because you could spend money every day. So at least it's those steps in the right direction. And my hope and my prayer is that this video motivated and encouraged you to organize and start your very own no spend challenge too.